I'm here with current UK champion jockey and international riding star, Rasheen Murphy. Man to my left, been tearing it up in Australia over the winter, former champion apprentice. And the man that's been tipped by many to one day fill those champion jockey shoes, Tom, Rasheen, welcome to the Goggles Are Off. Rasheen, what does it take to be a champion jockey? I suppose lots of good horses and uh, connections who are willing to send you here, there and everywhere in search of winners and then the hunger to go with it. Does the man opposite you have all of those things on your mind, certainly on the hunger side? Yeah, and, and the talent, yeah. He, um, he will be champion jockey one day. I hope he'll allow me win it a few times before, <laughs> before that happens. Tom, is that high up there on the, the list of your ambitions? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, seeing O'Sheen a couple of years ahead of me doing it and um, sort of showing how it's possible. I, I, I mean, it's always something that you want to do as a kid and still still uh, definitely firm in the sights. What are some of the strengths that this guy, for you, riding against him or, or watching him, what are the things that you see in him? Uh, I think definitely... Uh, Communication, obviously we see it a lot now with social media. He's definitely got that down to a T and um, yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that uh, sets, sets you, him apart <laughs> from, from a lot of the others. You got any, any weaknesses? Issues? Plenty. <laughs> Confidence. I don't believe enough in myself. No, of course I do. Are, uh, we, are we buying that one? We buy we? confidence is a, is a uh, weakness. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I get very nervous every day. But is that a good thing? Can that be a good thing, do you think? No, I don't get nervous, Tom. No? <laughs> no. Uh, I think I'm very fortunate to... Well, I know I'm very lucky to work for uh, powerful stables and uh, good, good owners, particularly Qatar Racing and Andrew Baldwin and everyone else that goes with it. Without those connections... Uh, I wouldn't be able to ride the same volume or quality of winners. What about you, Tom? Is there any anything that, that you can think of that, or each season you approach and think, I need to be better at that, or this is an obvious weakness I need to address? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you start young, 16, and, and like O'Sheen and I were lucky, we rode our claim out quick. I think one of the biggest things is physical physical strength you know there's lads that are 35 40 years of age that I mean you look at Ryan Moore he could pass as a boxer if you saw him physically so you know I've always thought that's that's something I've tried to improve on year on year and I think it's it's a large part of keeping yourself up to scratch and where you want to be. What was it about the two of you that when you rode out your claims your careers didn't hit that stutter point which a lot of guys and, and girls hit? I think Obviously, I was connected to Andrew Baldwin, and he continued to use me. Uh, maybe not as first jockey, but certainly on a Saturday, he supported me properly. And I think Tom had the same sort of support from Richard Hannon. We, we weren't given first choice rides by any stretch of the imagination, but we, we were given our volume uh, continuously with chances of riding winners. Did you think it was going to be harder than it was when you rode out your claim? Uh, yeah, in all honesty, cause, like, I think when you're young, it, it, it's easy to sort of listen to people that are older than you and you have respect for, and when they say you're, you're going to be done when your claim's out because you've ridden it out too quick, I guess mm. it's easy to believe, but, yeah, I mean, it's like Oshin said, if you've got someone like a Richard Hannon bolding behind you, pff, I mean, the quantity of rides carries you through, and then, obviously, because they're using you, everyone else does too, and... Yeah, fortunate to never hit a, hit a rut in the road so far yet. Um, but I guess, yeah, hopefully it'll never come. <laughs> How long did it take you to ride out your claim? Uh, I rode December through till October and then another four months. So, uh, what, 15, 16 months, 17 months? Quicker. You were a bit quicker. Same as you? Similar. No, I was about 11 months, but I didn't have a break because when I went to Australia, which was supposed to be a break. Uh, I rode and got, and got lots of support, so you know, I, I, I would have had more rides than you during yeah. that period, for sure. You mentioned Australia. What was it like, Ashin, for you at a time when you couldn't be riding because of what was going on over in, in the UK, seeing this guy 
riding those Group One winners. Smashing it up. Yeah. Um, was it, was, I mean, it's great. Obviously, you guys are pals. You want to see it. But was it? Was there any frustration as well that you couldn't be out anywhere riding? No, not really, because uh, he's Sydney based when he goes to Oz, uh, essentially, and uh, all the big racing in, in that time of year is in Sydney. I wouldn't have had the support that Tom would get. I wouldn't get the same support, so I wouldn't have that success that he would have had anyway. Does that make sense? Mm. So no, I was just delighted that he was smashing it and. You know, riding a Group One winner anywhere uh, is huge, but doing it when all attention is on you because the racing world uh, in Europe is completely shut down is massive, and it got you know recognition. I think certainly uh, your status as a rider is elevated to the world stage after something like that. You've talked in the past about how important it is to to not just ride to the best of your ability over here, but to to ride internationally at the, the top level. That's something you've seen this guy do over yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it, it kind of comes into the fact that you have to have confidence to be able to go abroad, walk into a wearing room where you don't really know anyone or you might possibly know people, but, and have the confidence to ride in the same manner and ride properly. Um, and I mean, you know, Oshin's proved it. Ryan Moore goes around the world and, uh, kills it wherever he goes and as do a lot of other top jockeys and I think you know that's one thing that I guess trainers and owners respect if you can go somewhere else and show not dominance but you can show that you're capable of doing it it, it kind of proves that you're at a level where they don't need to question your ability or confidence in the saddle. How important is that Sheen when you go into a, an almost an unfamiliar setting that you carry yourself, do you think, with other riders who you haven't met before in a certain way? Yeah, it's, it's quite strange uh, going into a weighing room in a jurisdiction for the first time that you've never been, uh, particularly if you haven't met lots of the guys there. You probably feel a little bit intimidated. I could say Hong Kong is, is one of the more difficult places. Uh, you've got big egos and, uh, and they're not afraid to um, big themselves up. Uh, and I think America's hard as well. Uh, they're very focused on dirt racing primarily, uh, left-handed as we know, and it's hard for us to acclimatise quickly. I think Frankie is incredible. Uh, he's won a Breeders' Cup Classic on, it wasn't dirt, but it was on Tapita, I think. Um, I think both Tom and I would like to do something similar. I think that is one of the crowning things, winning a Group one dirt race for a European rider would be unbelievable. When it comes to, to I mean, you guys are, are young, but when it comes to fresh blood coming in, you talk about at times perhaps you going into a weighing room and feeling intimidated, mm. but you guys aren't at the level yet where you might sort of try and position yourselves in the weighing room in a, in a certain place so other people know where they are. No, I'd hope neither of us uh, feel the need to do something like that. I don't know about you. I would uh, say similar. No, yeah, similar. But I think you know, there's a, there is an element of, you know, I know going down to Sydney and that, you know, it's a it's a competitive base of jockeys, and if you walked in and sort of let them go, oh, all right, you, you know, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't last very long you because it's competitive. Yeah, you know, you have to have you have to have mates, and obviously, I, you know, you want to get on with everyone, but it's a competitive sport. You know, it's not, it's. Um, one man's loss is another's gain, and, and and I think you have to almost view it as I'm sure everyone else sees it the same. So it's a it's a very tricky balance between getting on with everyone and and being competitive at the same time. And you know I don't like as Sheen says I don't think you need to walk in a weighing room and make your presence felt straight away because I don't think it go down too well in most most places. It's a it's a fascinating sport, isn't it? Because it's different to other sports. There's the horse involved as well. So while it's very much man on man and and, and competitive, as you say. You've also got that half a ton of animal beneath you, which is affecting how you perform. But how is there a, an ethos of what happens out on the track with you stays out there between between guys that are riding? If there is anything which you might not agree with, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the British rain room is uh, we're all friends, and there are very few arguments. Uh, I would say it's different in other countries. Personally, I love going to France and and obviously I've done well in Japan, but I just feel comfortable in those environments, whereas others I don't, you know. So, and I think Tom is probably the same. I have never really ridden in Sydney, I think only twice, but I feel comfortable in Melbourne, yeah. you know. 
Do you change the way you ride in different jurisdictions? Oh uh, yeah, you have to. I think you know. In England, it's uh, not a. It, it, it's. I guess it's quite an aggressive way of riding. The mm. same with Ireland compared to a lot of other places. Um, for whatever reason, um, and when you go to Sydney, if you rode in the same manner, you would ride for two days and be banned for the next three months. So you have to, you have to edit the way you ride a bit. But um, but you know, same same principle. Get a horse from A to B as fast as you possibly can, and try and get home in front. So you know, while it's while it's in a different manner, it's the same same game. Still trying to win. Still trying to win. How much do you do you look at other jockeys, or do you just focus on yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's hard not to look at other jockeys, you know, you're in a weighing room with them all the time, you're sitting next to people that you grew up idolising and um, it's probably, it's, it's pretty surreal sometimes, like Ashin has had it, you know, you, you're pony racing and you're watching Richard Hughes, Ryan Moore, and then literally a year out of pony racing, you're riding with them every day and you're kind of, you're watching them and seeing what they do, what do they do different that sets them apart and I guess the longer you ride, the more you find out um, and the more you learn about what they do and, and, and what does set the top class apart. Did you ever try and imitate anyone, any, any people you looked up to, or did you always have your own way of going about it? No, uh, I think as a child you definitely try and model yourself on certain people. I wanted to be Kieran Fallon, uh, and then I realised that I could never really copy him, so I just focused on trying to improve and improve uh, and develop my own style. Uh, why, why, couldn't, why couldn't you copy him? Because you can't imitate somebody exactly, mm. you know. Uh, I'm not physically. I'm not the same as him. I think if I think what really I can only speak for myself, but I'll speak for both of us. I think uh, Frankie Dottori and Andrea Azzini uh, ride quite similar, and they look very good on top of a horse, as does James Doyle. But it's a different style. Uh, yeah, I, I'd is, is like to. A, is that a size thing? Is that a height issue? And also, it's just pure class. The way they. Uh, appear on a saddle, whereas I can't imitate that no matter how hard I try, uh, so I've given up. It's a shame he doesn't look good on the horse. Uh, right? <laughs> no, it's true, yeah, like, you know, it's like saying, I don't know, Holly Dolly's five foot trying to imitate James Dolly's, what, nearly six foot, I can't happen, but that's not set, and then same with Andrea and Frankie, you know, Andrea's not going to look like Doyle, and yeah. Doyle's not going to look like Ryan, so, you know, it's kind of, it's impossible. Do you think there are fundamental differences between the, 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 your representative styles between the two of you? Um, I think we look quite similar. Yeah. Neither of us are, I don't know, that neither of us, stylish. yeah, I was just about to say, what you call stylish or, or, um, or tidy, style. yeah, <laughs> bog man style. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, like, we're not uh, style orientated riders, I guess. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. I mean, Richard Hughes is class to watch, mm. uh, but neither of us are ever going to look like him. We had to accept that at a young age. Um, strength or technique? Both, both, both. I would say he's, Tom Marquand is very physically strong, uh, and some jockeys aren't like that, others are. What is amazing, imagine uh, we've we are go-kart racing at 16, and at 17, we're Formula One racing with Lewis Hamilton. Mm. That's the only way I can describe galloping your pony around a field and then riding in a race with yeah. Ryan Moore and Frankie de Tori. That's sleepless night. It's a huge step. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> are you used to it now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you pretty quickly grow into it. I mean, I've only been riding, well, not even six years, but it feels like I've been at it forever. and. I guess when when I was an apprentice, similarly so, like you ride for a year, it feels like you've been riding ten years already. You know, it's one of those because you do so much of it and you live, breathe, sleep it, whatever. It's it's all that consumes you. So it feels like you've been doing it a lot longer than you actually have. Right, this guy. That's you. Is it? That's you. And that's Kamiko. Um What are his attributes that that point him towards being a derby horse? Well, the best thing about him is this here, his head. He has a great mind, he relaxes well, and he tries very hard. He pins his ears back, gets his head low. Uh, so, look, the Guineas is a mile, the Derby's a mile and a half. We won't know until he goes there. You were in the, the Guineas. <laughs> I mean, 
you like most were a little bit further back to be fair but but watching that race back does he stay a mile and a half i mean i was chasing um from the word go but i mean look like oshin says his, his head's in the right place i guess as with any athlete it's all it's uh, a lot of it's the mental side of it and i think you know having no crowd at epsom that's a lot of uh, energy that's not wasted on worrying about what's going on around them and i guess he showed a hell of a lot of class in the guineas and you know if he got the right trip round you can only oh, i guess you can yeah i was going to say you can only hope but um yeah i mean look he, he he's a, they say the classics are the best guinea uh, derby trials so he's the only one that's really sort of shown his hand you've won a derby trial um Look, the first thing to say about you and this lad, I suppose, is racing in all seriousness, it, it comes with its ups and downs, right? You know this horse well, but equally, you know you're not going to be riding him in the derby now. Yeah. I mean, how, Asheen, I mean, disappointment-wise, just from your perspective, when you, when you don't get the call-up that you want, how do you deal with that? Oh, it's frustrating. Uh, I suppose, as a child, you dream about riding really good horses, and he's looked very good. You've won two stats on him. So, you know, you always want to retain the partnership. Funnily enough, I'm his gallop rider. Tom is his race rider. He just won't be on, on, uh, at Epsom on the 4th of July. But, um, but it's tough. But I suppose we, we grow up hearing about it and knowing about it, so we expect it at times as well. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it, in, in life and in, in racing, that you, as a young rider, I suppose you you have to deal with and you hope that that opportunity on the, the big stage comes along but you know the horse well and I'm sure you want him to go and do his stuff. Yeah without doubt um, you know I guess that's one of the probably downsides of doing well quickly at a young age is I guess your experience gets questioned um, you know that's not to say that you wouldn't be able to get the job done on the right day if, if given that opportunity but you know with something like this it's it's the derby that you know Bjorn Nielsen, the owner, has been trying to win it for, I don't know, 40 odd years. I can't, I, can't, I certainly can't question his, his decision to put one of the best riders the world's ever seen on board. And, you know, I've just got to hope that possibly one day I get to see the back of his ears again and, and hopefully he'll be a derby winner. It's that catch 22, right? Of, of, of you, you, you understand a relative lack of experience, but you want to get the experience on the big stage and, yeah. and you've got to hope somebody gives you that. Yeah, but I mean, look, it, it's, it's, it's a, a minor bump in the road. Hopefully, hopefully he's as good as I think he is. Um, and you know the way he won the Derby trial was exceptionally impressive. And you know he looks he looks prime contender at the moment. And um, and hopefully he proves to be so. The track wise, do both of you think the horses that you rode last time will, will handle Epsom and handle the idiosyncrasies of that track? I think. Uh, well, I mean, you know, Lingfield's sort of not miles apart or miles away from a similar style track that, that Epsom is. So, you know, having that experience around there, sweeping left hand bend down a hill, you know, he handled it pretty well that day and I'm sure he'll have learned a lot from it again. It points the right way. Have you learned from your experiences riding at Epsom in the Derby? Yeah, I suppose it can be a very, very rough race. Uh, there isn't an inch given. And if you can kind of stay out of trouble and not get too much hassle through the run, then you give yourself a fair chance of finishing and, and running a good race. Uh, if there was a jockey cam on every rider, you'd understand what I'm, how, what I'm saying about how rough it can be. Um, so, yeah, I'm comfortable with Cameco handling the track there because horses with lots of pace who are in their comfort zone uh, don't struggle with, with tricky courses. It's ones who lack gears and are a little bit on their head and not uh, that comfortable with the speed of the race generally are the ones that fall down the hill and don't handle the undulations. How different is it riding in one of the, the big races compared to your, your Monday afternoon 320 at, at wherever for, for you is it is it is it a task to, to handle those big step ups and do you get more and more used to it um yeah i mean i, I like I'm, I'm pretty lucky i'm quite laid back i've always tried to view them the same and you know it all 
you, again, it comes back to your targets the same. You want A to be the fastest and in the best possible manner that you can for your horse and connections and, you know, whether it be bringing home a Group 1 or, or a, a Class 6 winner at Kenton, realistically, you're doing the same job for the same person or same people and your target's the same and, you know, I don't think, uh, or I think it's it's very easy to overcomplicate it when it's not necessary to. What would you say to this guy? Goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cracker. What would you say now? Look, I don't know how old you are though. What do you think? Uh, I've got l less spots now. <laughs> Also um, face cream. More wrinkles, <laughs> and I've got less poppy fat on my face. You can just about see my cheekbones today. Uh, what would I say to him? Has he done everything right since this point to now? Uh, Career-wise, yeah. I, I think I'm, I'm comfortable with saying I have. Yeah, I've done my absolute best. Um, yeah, I, I don't look very pretty in that photo, do I? Tell me, you've aged well. Mm. Um, I actually know where that was. Go on. That was Here Comes When before I won him at Chester. Which is a what, when you're still claiming? Which was while I was just out of my claim, I'd say, or possibly still claiming, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe it was in my first season, in fact. It turned out all right, Here Comes When, didn't he? He was a group one winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He liked a bit of cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I did all those no managed to I won a handicap yeah. on him, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> of 90 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're, you're, you're comfortable that he's so far, he's, has he, if you had said to him then you'd be champion jockey in how many years time, would, would, would he have believed you? Uh, no, definitely not, definitely. My, my primary thing at that stage was just being champion apprentice and then hoping to win group races and then it would lead on to something. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, Tom, after you were champion apprentice, what was your immediate next target? I think taking that next step, sort of step up to a better grade of horse, because yeah. I rode, I, I rode three quarters of my claim out was champion apprentice, and I hadn't even ridden a Channel Four winner, or like a decent Saturday winner, which mm -hmm. was you know pretty rare because I know, obviously in your first season you rode for was it uh, Qatar won the Temple was it the Temple yeah, Stakes yeah, on Hot yeah. Streak or yeah. you know I was seeing seeing other lads winning and Eddie Greatrix the year I was champion apprentice. He won the, I think it was the Balmoral for Godolphin. I mean, I yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. On champion, typically yeah on champion. Uh, you know, I was really good mates with Eddie, but jealousy went through the roof because, you know, I was, I was, and I was champion apprentice, and I was watching that thinking, oh my god, that's that's what I want next. Um, so yeah, I guess the the quality was always something I wanted to sort of reach to. You get your picture as well, don't worry. Oh, god. I hope he's yes, oh. he's fat as well in that photo. <laughs> oh. Those are the days of doing 7-Eleven as well. I'm a good stone heavier, but um, yeah. That, he was never going to be a jump jockey, was he? Oh, do you know what? I was you destined. To oh be. yeah, I was destined to be a jump jockey until I don't know, maybe only like a year, a year, maybe a year and a half before I started riding on the flat. It's a competition. Who's up to you? I think I might be winning. <laughs> no, I think I think I'm up here. I've got more spots. I've got a bit of colour in me at least. Yeah. I'm I think if we did one of those Instagram <laughs> polls, I think it'd be 50-50. Thanks, think mate. Right. That's all right, no problem, no problem. <laughs> but what, what, would you, what would you say to this guy now, Tom? Um, I don't know, I guess... Believe in the system, I guess, really, you know. I think don't listen to too many people's negative yeah, thoughts comments. towards what's going to happen next. And um, yeah, trust the system. But is there ever a thought you're not going to make it? Because to be honest, you guys are, you know, you, you work incredibly hard, you're brilliant, you're, you're lucky that, it, you know, you've, you've ticked those boxes and you've made it to the extent that you're jockeys and for the foreseeable future, that's what you're going to be. But it doesn't work out like that for everyone. Was there ever a fear in here that, that it wasn't going to get to that point? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think. I think without without bettering yourself from starting off at that stage and, and, and keeping on bettering yourself, it's very easy to sort of uh, for your progress to stand still and to be left behind. But um, yeah, I'm fortunate that things have carried on moving forward from there and uh, I'm a little bit skinnier and a little bit older now as well. <laughs> I'm just glad there's no photo of me at 16. Thank God for that. Um, good stuff. Lads, thank you very much. Keep riding well. Have a great season.
Put the goggles on. Yeah, the goggles on. <laughs>